what do you think of ghost theory? Why won't you mention ghost theory? Can you debunk ghost theory? Why don't you shout out ghost theory is real? A debunker should never fear a paranormal channel. A debunker shouldn't fear any channels. You're weak. Why can't you just man up and do what you're supposed to do? Shout out these other real channels like Ghost Theory. Theodos, weirdos, boils and ghouls, how are we all doing? I hope everyone is well. I know, you've looked at the thumbnail, you've looked at the title and you've gone, oh, not again. Whoa, slow down, wait for it. There's method to my madness. The method to my madness is, as alluded to in that little intro that I made, constantly asked about ghost theory. Constantly asked in my lives, are they real? Are they fake? Why don't you shout them out? Quite often I'm called a coward for not looking at them. Quite often people tell me how wrong I am not to feature them because it sets a bad precedence in the regards of any other channel that comes at you the way they did. You're going to have to leave alone. And I agree 100% with all of it. This could come across as just me being bitter, but I've left it a year. And this isn't me firing at Joe and Elliot. There'll be no piss taking of Joe and Elliot. This will be me looking at the content as a viewer after numerous view after numerous people turn up my live stream and say, what about Ghost Theory? Why don't you shout them out as real? Why don't you shout them out as fake? Why don't you tell it how it really is instead of? And it's, yeah, you're right. It's kind of a pre-scripted answer to give every time I'm asked. Me and Ghost Theory have a personal history and it's easier if I don't say anything because... And it's pointless. It's absolutely pointless me pandering like that because... I'm still hated by the Ghost Theory audience, or a lot of them. Pretty sure Ghost Theory themselves really don't like me. They've just let things go because I haven't said anything for so long. But a lot of people are interested in my thoughts on Ghost Theory. So let me just start this video as I mean to go on. I don't care if you don't like me because of a past with this channel. I don't care if you don't like me because you love other channels that I have debunked. I don't care. I have never cared. I just wanted to keep the peace for a while. The more I get asked, the more I'm like, I have to deal with this. I have to speak about this. And some people are going to be like, you don't have to. You're just doing this for clicks and views. Well, sue me. Because every person that goes out investigating and uploads to YouTube is doing it for clicks and views, as well as whatever other reasons, whether they believe, disbelieve, knit voodoo dolls, or eat food as fast as they can. Beard meets food. What an incredible, incredible guy. But you get what I mean? Everybody has their passions, their special talents, what have you, and they could just do that without YouTube. And everyone uploads to YouTube because they want the channel to be successful. I never thought it was possible for this channel to be successful. But here we are, approaching 25,000 subscribers. I know we're a couple of hundred off, but still, not bad for just over a year's work. And while it seems the ghost theory can go out, put out whatever content they want, and that is their opinion, other people are not really allowed to have an opinion. Not just because of Ghost Theory, but because of some of their audience. Now, the side eye guy did a video on Ghost Theory not so long ago, and Ghost Theory actually dealt with that quite well. It was quite nice to see. And who knows, maybe they could deal with it this video quite well. Because maybe they learned after the bashing the purple took, after the absolute hiding that I took. And in turn, I, they probably had a bit of a hiding off people as well. This isn't a, I'm firing back at Joe and Elliot. This isn't a, I'm having a go at Joe and Elliot. This is me having a deep dive into Ghost Theory's content. Ghost Theory, the channel. Are they real? Are they fake? Can I debunk them? And for people with a short attention span, I will say this from the offset. I have not 100% debunked Ghost Theory. Never have, and I still haven't. And I've looked. Does that mean they are 100% a genuine paranormal investigation team not really there are a number of teams that i've been looking at that you can't catch faking but you know they're up to something that then falls into the realms of my opinion and i'm allowed my opinion and my opinion is there's far too much constantly caught by ghost theory and i'll tell you a little story i initially had a good relationship with ghost theory they helped get me to a thousand subscribers i in turn made a glowing review video of them and at that point was probably when I was at my most toxic in regards to debunking. Because I went hard at everything. Because I thought that's what I needed to do to succeed. But then Ouija Brother, the Ouija Brothers, Ghost Theory, Ghost on Trent, I was in full sport. And in that video, there was a moment where a mobile phone sleep tone kicks in. To tell somebody 
you gotta get your rest. That was Joe's phone. And they both stop and it's all, what the fucking fuck was that? Oh my God. And then there's a pass in the time and then there's a, oh, uh, yeah, I'm an idiot. Because I realized it was the go to sleep tone on my phone. My bad. And I laugh. And then I laughed at the sections in the house where he's walking down the stairs and he's going, you know, they're like, I don't know what that was. And then he's going, it's your phone. I don't know what that, what could have caused that? It was your phone. You're an idiot. It was your phone. I laughed. I drank it all in. But that event, in my opinion, speaks volumes about what happens on their channel so, so regularly. There are always, there's always somebody else there. There is quite often things thrown or moved. There is often this feeling of dread and urgency and scared. And then it's always, but it's not paranormal. And that's the same thing that was done with the phone. But I couldn't see that because I was too invested in the comedy and how nice these guys were. And they were. They were very nice to me. They come across very well on camera. Their editing is fantastic. The way they film, the way they edit, the on-stream chemistry, everything. Top notch. That's why they're as big a channel as they are. They've worked hard at it. They've earned it. But in my opinion, I don't think they've quite earned it through legitimate paranormal investigations. I believe that there's a certain something added to it and it's become a bit of a formula for them and it's become a bit of a formula that their audience has started calling out as well for example we will take a look at the most recent video and this is called warning disturbing content he was found dead in this abandoned home scary paranormal now i watched this video and you know they don't claim there to be paranormal activity okay so the first thing so the first thing i'd like to share with you there is yet another bang. And you have to question how often in seven years that you've seen other channels that have been going longer for, seen a full door fall over on screen, seen things jump out of windowsills, heard bangs, heard running, but not found a natural cause for it, just allude to it. Because in the last few weeks, I have seen more events like that in Ghost Theory videos than in channels that I have watched a full seven years worth of content about. And to me, and to me, that is staging. That is, that is too much good luck to be real. However, I can be wrong. That is just my opinion. Could it be that they are just very lucky in the amount of things that get knocked over by potentially not paranormal things? Yeah... How many times can things get knocked over and not actually break when they're expensive? I mean, I called Lee from Really Haunted open that before, and then he smashed his laptop. But watch this. Your living room, whatever you call it. Joe jumped too early. There is a huge crash, but he jumps slightly before. Then they do a little bit where they say, you know, we've checked the footage, and I jumped before because I saw something in the corner of my eye, or I heard something against the door. That's something that we can't hear or see. Obviously, now, in my opinion, this was designed. This was going to happen either way. He just happened to have jumped too early. Now, it could be that something caught his eye, but this happens too often with these guys. And he jumps, and he panics. Oh my fucking god! <gasps> Now, Elliot doesn't look scared, but, you know, they've described the state on this house. They've said there's cat notes about cats and things. So potentially his brain is already saying it's a cat. But he does this, and then he's streaked into Ankama shit mode. And it kind of stands out to me, but that is just my opinion. I swear I've just seen orange light outside. You did hear an orange light outside, you also hear the rumble of a car. So that's probably an indicator in somebody turning somewhere. But they don't claim that to be anything at all. It's just a comment of, I swear I've just seen an orange light. It looks like a car turning. Okay, so they have... They, the, after the event, they cut away to um, the shots of them outside where for some reason they don't look at the camera. They talk like this. And a lot of teams do it, and I've mocked a lot of teams for it. So it's nothing personal. It's just what I do. Even though I've done it myself. Calm your tits. They, they describe the, you know, there's notes about cats as cat food. It could have been a cat. Fair enough. But when a cat, cats are very skittish. And when a cat makes a noise or drops, knocks something over and there's a loud bang, 
The cat will then run away. They scurry away. They jump over shit. They would have seen that cat running away. They would have heard the cat moving, hiding, getting to somewhere safe. Cats are skittish and they are very loud, as are rats. Now, could it have been a mouse that's just dislodged something heavy? Potentially, because if you watch this video in full, there are rat droppings everywhere in this house. It stands to reason there would be mouse droppings in this house. you got cats, rats and mice. But they don't investigate this noise to its fullest for my liking. But, you know, I understand fear. I understand adrenaline. And maybe it's caused you not to tip the camera down that extra couple of inches to prove there's nobody behind the door. To prove there's no third person. But I am not saying there is a third person there. But we have to look at all possibilities. Was it a rat? Was it a cat? I don't think it's a cat. Was it a mouse? Or was it a third person? Or... Was it in fact a paranormal event? We have to look at all all of those options. Well, there's, there's, there's no, something hit the door. There's, there's absolutely something no doubt hit about that it. door. There's no doubt about it. Could have been the cat. Okay, now we get to this section, and this section sets all sorts of alarm bells ringing because I see this quite often. Something happens. There's a whip of the camera, a fast whip of the camera, and there's nothing there. But this turns into the ninja cat meme. There's a noise, he peeks nothing. There's a noise, he peeks nothing. There's a noise, he peeks nothing. They have multiple cameras. We've seen them in other houses. Maybe they've only taken two cameras this night. Absolutely fine. Why haven't they placed a camera in this hallway and then both of them stood back in the living room? Or are we meant to believe that whatever is touching that REM pod understands that there is a camera there? Because if it's a spirit or a ghost or whatever you want to call it, potentially it could understand there's a camera there. But they've already, you know, discussed... A cat but they've said clearly there's not a cat here or elliot said there's not a cat here it's in the video check it out why wouldn't they try to prove there's not a cat here by leaving that camera out there to prove that that rem pod isn't being manipulated by a cat but then a cat would be skittish and run from it there is also the biggest fly i have ever seen in my life on the on the wall of the hallway is that fly big enough to keep setting the rem pod off but why is the rem pod going off seemingly in response to questions potentially it's a ghost but ghost theory don't investigate it properly as paranormal investigators. They don't leave a camera out there. They just play this weird game of peekaboo with a REM pod. And it immediately, immediately caught me as that staged. Now, again, my opinion, I can't prove it. But these camera whips, very basic channels with very basic editing skills, do this camera whip and they hide cuts in there. And they hide it really well. I've missed them before. Other debunkers have picked them up. Could there be cuts in these camera whips? I can't spot them. So potentially, so realistically, they may not be there. However, this camera whip in all the time and this game of peekaboo, ninja cat, it, it's off. Watch. Is there a cat? No. Fuck off. There's no cat. There's nothing here. Oh, there is definitely, definitely not a cut <laughs> there. That whip was too slow for there to have been a cut. But at this point, that REM pod activity has happened twice. At this point, everyone else that I watch and I know when I enjoy would have left a camera out there to prove what was or wasn't causing that REM pod to go off. They don't. They continue this. There's something here. Hmm. Now again, I can't see a cut in that camera whip, but there are, because it's night vision and a reflective white paint, probably a gloss white paint, it's quite easy to hide a cut in that white flash. I can't say they have, because I can't see it for myself, but potentially it's there, but I don't, I doubt it. But this REM pod has again gone off, but they don't leave a camera there. They just keep whipping back and forth, which is bizarre. What was that behind me? I'm assuming you don't want to be seen.
That's fucking creepy. Why? I'm assuming you don't want to see be seen. Bleep bleep. The camera stays on the door. Why not throw that camera out as quick as you can to try and see if something has scurried off? I don't understand. Well, I, I do understand. It's because they know what is setting the REM pod off. Are you here with us now? Are you here with us now? Are you here with us now? And the Rempod makes a noise. As it cuts off, you hear a click. I don't know what that click is. Maybe it's just the Rempod deactivating. Could it be the batteries in the Rempod? Yeah, probably, because Rempods play up when the batteries run low. But they would know that, and they don't investigate that. I think they may even use it in a throwaway comment a little bit later on, which in itself is odd. Why wouldn't you check the batteries or change the batteries? Why would Elliot be zoomed in on that? Why would Elliot be focused on that door and not getting the camera around that door as quick as he can? It's odd. This isn't how most people would investigate. And these guys have been at this a long time. Are you the person who died in this house? <laughs> no. No intent to, to get out there as quick as you can to see what the hell is causing this. No intent to leave a camera on this REM pod. And this goes on for quite a while. It's stopped. It's stopped every fucking time I come out here. Can you touch the device now, please? Magically... It doesn't go off. Do you not like being seen? Come back in. If that goes off, well, like... Can you now set the device off again? Can you try and use it to communicate with us? The fuck was that? Look how slow and deliberate these movements are. Really? So if you want to go and look at that in its full, please do go and do it. Warning, disturbing content. He was found dead in this abandoned home, scary paranormal. What's all of it? So, you know, you can't then say, ah, your cat's made that look worse than it really is and blah, 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 blah. You know, I've got to try and edit this down somewhat. But that entire thing goes on longer than I've shown and yeah there's something off really off why wouldn't you leave a camera out there why doesn't he pan all the way down to the floor to prove there's nobody behind the door frame however i don't think there's a third person setting that REM pod off because there's no movement sounds either side of it being triggered if somebody was grabbing the aerial and running away grabbing the aerial running away on command with them guys they'd have been caught via noises somewhere but bearing in mind they're good at editing. But for a REM pod... Now, the battery argument is kind of nil and void because it only responds to certain questions and only when neither of them are in that corridor. Could that be paranormal? Yeah. But why do they not investigate it further with a camera? Why not leave a camera out there? At no point is it a written rule that you can't leave a camera somewhere and things happen because maybe the ghost doesn't want to see people. Not only does it strike me as odd, but it strikes me as um, staged. They know what's happening. But that is just my opinion. Come at me, hate me all you want, because at the end of the day, most of you hate me anyway. If this was just one event in one video, I could forgive it. I could be like, hey, maybe they, maybe they had something there. But it's almost every video. They do have videos on occasion where nothing happens. But that's less likely than something happening. And then it's always, but it might not be paranormal.
and it, it you know it kind of it stinks of we are saying it's not paranormal to keep the bunkers at bay to keep the audience on side i've got to say it how it is Okay, so the next video I want to take a look at. We left cameras alone in a haunted house. What we found is terrifying. I've seen a few teams in this house, and nobody's got a sniff of any evidence. So they leave their cameras in the house, and they go outside. And again, and again, in my opinion, there's something off with this. And we'll play the scene out for you guys. Okay, so Ghost Theory have left cameras running. Uh, they have left the house, and you hear some bangs and some weird noises. I personally think I can hear somebody moving behind this camera at one point, and you hear a breath. Potentially it's a ghost. Potentially. Or are they not really outside? But they, again, it's my opinion. And my opinion is formed because of what happens to this camera in particular. There's little movements. They've got an EMF pump pumping out EMF. Now, the theory behind that is EMF pumps can elevate paranormal activity because ghost spirits and spooky woogies can feed off EMF. I don't necessarily subscribe to that belief because high levels of EMF or high levels of EMF can cause auditory hallucinations. But an auditory hallucination didn't push this camera over. But I think a person did, and I'll explain why once we've seen it. Right, that's a car. They don't claim that to be like anything else other than a car. They can't. Movement upstairs or in the house somewhere. There's movement in the house. More movement in the house. Or there's the same bang. But then there's a little tick there, like somebody's moved behind the camera. Potentially, it's not them. They are outside, remember. They've told us that. Oop, the camera's moving. The camera's moving. The camera has fallen over, but there's nobody in the house. How does that happen? Potentially a ghost. So why are you so cynical, Beardo? Of all of the cameras, of all of the things that could have fallen over in this house, their camera goes over and lands on whatever this is. Whatever this is, is soft. This camera that is very expensive has fallen into something that is less likely to damage the camera. Why didn't it fall the other way? That in itself is kind of suspicious to me. The camera landed on something to protect the camera. You can hear it when it lands. You can see whatever this soft-looking item is. And that sets alarm bells ringing for me. But there's a little bit more to this because, obviously, they are outside. They've told us they are outside. Are they really, though? I've seen this shot before. I have seen this little camera wobble, then a little bit of a turn, and then a camera fall. I have seen this happen to another team. And it's, apart from the framing being a little different because it's a different house, it's off. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen this happen before. Almost identical, just in a different property. The difference with that one is the camera landed on something that potentially wouldn't damage it. You can hear us talking outside. I'm glad you pointed that out because that has just alerted me to the fact that when all of this stuff is going on earlier, we can't hear you talking outside. Why is that? Now, potentially they could have gone to their car and sat in their car, but they, they don't say that they did that because when they come back in, they're like, we've been stood outside for X amount of minutes and we are freezing and we are freezing. 
you see where I'm going? There are no voices outside this house. They do not have a conversation outside this house the entire time when there is banging and movement and a camera pushed over inside the house. Once all of the activity stops, suddenly we can hear their voices outside. Were they stood in silence? Were they sat in their car? Or... In all probability, were they inside the house making bangs and pushing cameras over? Again, my opinion, but look at it logically. A ghost pushed it over when they can't be heard, or they were inside, and that's why you can hear the voices outside, because they're inside pushing cameras over and making bangs. I am starting to get hypothermic. I should go back in. Got been over an hour, surely. Yeah. I'm starting to get hypothermic. Shall we go back in? Alluding to, they have been stood outside that entire time. And they only spoke once. They had one little conversation after all of that activity. Now, they can, of course, fire back with, hey, hang on. We just cut out the parts of us talking in the background and only showed the highlights. But it's suspicious to me. I have a suspicious mind, like Elvis. It's enough for me to question them. And it's been enough for their audiences to question them and for other people to email me. You need to watch this video because of this, because of that. And then something else to consider. They did an investigation at 30 East Drive. Um, it was a live investigation and Joe says that he sees a ghost. I've just seen something in the kitchen. So while they're at 30 East Drive, at one point, Joe whips the camera and he's like, I've just seen something. I have just seen something. And, you know, it's a ghost, potentially. I mean, why not? Why not? It's 30 East Drive. But then why after this live, after where he saw something so profound, does he seem to forget that he has actually seen an apparition? That was his description. And afterwards, he seems to forget. And this brings me to another point with ghost theory. They have so much incredible evidence and incredible events that they have forgotten about by the next investigation. Whereas the teams that I shout out, the teams I enjoy, they, they have something as simple as something speaking, saying the words, I love you. And that stays with them until now. It is still brought up until now. Another team... A simple sweeping brush being pushed over. It's still going on. People are still discussing it. These guys have huge, massive things happen so often that people forget by the next episode. I don't see anyone posting on, you know, certain Facebook groups. Oh my God, did you see what Ghost Theory have had? And then the conversations continue like I do with the other channels. Is that because people realise what's going on? The following clips are going to give you a taste of why I question like I do. There's too much. There's somebody walking around. We see this every time. So as soon as we entered the building, it had a really weird energy about it. But can you make a sound? Can you throw something or show yourself if you're with us? My God! Would you speak to us if there weren't two of us here? <gasps> go, 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 go. They're split up. Yeah. No. Please tell me you fucking heard that. Can you make a noise in a room? Fuck! For fireworks. In the grounds. No. Can you make a noise in a room? Fuck! Fuck's sake, I was just pointing there as well. That's Good. strange. Really, really strange. Look. If we get other stuff draining, then that'll be interesting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, f off, f off, f off. Oh, That's no way, no way. And yes, I agree with you. 
there's no way. A quick scan of your most viewed moments, and it's always banging movement, things being thrown. I can't find the video that I was told to look at where your REM pod was thrown. I wonder why that is. Is that also in line of the video where there was apparently something in a crib that is no longer available to, you know, subscribers and not members? Or maybe those videos don't exist at all. I don't know. I'm just asking the questions. In that quick look, in, right, 57 minutes I've been looking, and look at, just look at how much happens, whether it's paranormal or not. Even if they explain afterwards, ah, see, but what it was is, etc. We don't think that's paranormal. It's still, even when they say it's not paranormal, it happens more than any other channel that I watch. Any other channel. And let's be honest, I watch channels to debunk them as well, and I still don't see this amount. I just can't prove 100% that they are staging. But in my opinion, I think they are staging everything. I do think that on occasions there's a third person with them. I do think on occasions they say they're not in properties and they, in fact, they are. They get far too much poltergeist activity for this to be real. But this is all just my opinion. And you can make your own mind up. And even if you think, hey, do you know what? You're right. But they're really good. I can still watch them. They are very funny. They are very likable. Absolutely, you can. Of course you can. But for me that looks for the real and people that keep saying to me, why don't you shout out Ghost Theory as a real team? This is why I don't believe, in my opinion, the Ghost Theory are a real paranormal investigation channel. I think they overplay natural things. I think they downplay some things to make it look like, hey, look, we are debunking. Yay. And there's just too much all the time. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. As I said at the beginning of this video, I don't care if you don't like me because you don't like me anyway. If you're going to come in being all aggressive and arsey, all you're going to do is prove my point. Okay? Now, you may be going, uh, you're only doing ghost theory because they're such a big channel. Uh, you're only doing ghost theory to grow. If I do a video on Sam and Colby, Mindseed, Twin Paranormal, hell, any of the big American channels, I will get more views than watching Ghost Theory. I will get more views, I will get more toxicity, and I will get more comments calling me out. And that does my channel good. So I don't care. I have gone up against bigger, and my channel is still here. I have gone up against other channels who now have a respect for me, even though we completely disagree on things. So in summary, the reason I don't shout out Ghost Theory as real is nothing to do with the personal drama. It is because I don't believe they are legitimate paranormal investigators. Why don't I shout out Ghost Theory as fake? Because I can't 100% prove them as fake. I only have my opinion, and my opinion is I can never shout these out as real because I think they are faking. I think there is far too much activity. I think there is far too much... Oh, what the fucking fuck? Oh, 10 minutes later, uh, it wasn't paranormal. It was something quite natural. And that happens way too often. But again, my opinion. So leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. No channel is off the table for me unless... Unless they've had a very recent personal issue, like a bereavement, or, you know, there has been... You know, they've come out of some sort of rehab or they're struggling with some sort of addiction. I do not want to make things worse for those people and I won't make things worse for those people. But when you're putting out content and that content has constantly got activity in it, I am going to look no matter who you are. I can't turn blinkers on and I can't keep looking the other way in case I upset people anymore. Because it goes against why I started this channel. Much love to you all. Beardo, out.